Let's welcome in a very, very special guest now from KPMG. He's talking to us about infrastructure and what is really happening over there. Mr. Ilyas George, partner head, uh, partner and head infrastructure, government and healthcare services at KPMG India is now with us. Uh, Mr. George, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Hope all well at you and within your team and teammates. Uh, just wanted to get a sense that uh, how, why do you see that the economic activities have slowly started to pick up? When you talk to your clients, when you talk to what's happening on various projects on ground, uh, are things back to normal or they are still returning to normalcy? Mr. George, uh, sorry for that uh, network issue, but if you could just tell us why do you feel infrastructure is on a recovery path? Uh, how are you seeing things getting restarted? What, are, what does your talks with your client, prospective client indicate in terms of activity on the ground? Look, uh, the thirst in India for infrastructure is so large that it's only a matter of time before we are back on the rebound. And having said this, the whole rural and agriculture piece, which has really been kind of unscathed uh, to a large extent by this crisis, is looking good as we speak now. Government has also announced mega schemes for the whole farm gate to markets uh, approach, which basically also involves a heavy amount of involvement in uh, infrastructure. So as we speak, those uh, projects are now getting off the ground. We can see it when talking to our clients. Now, even looking at things like aviation, India is the largest, uh, third largest aviation market in the world in a sense. And the domestic thirst, so much of pent up demand is there that the uh, ICAO uh, predicts that it will take five years for the aviation sector to get back on track. But in India, it's going to be a much faster recovery. So whether you look at infrastructure, whether you look at the logistics from our village to the, uh, to the markets, or any other sector for that matter. We look at urban, the smart city projects, which are largely funded by the center, are basically not so much affected by the crisis, except in terms of maybe some delivery issues related to workers, etc. So we have great workarounds in this country, and I don't think that uh, you know, these. Uh, of course, we have a problem now. The private uh, investment in infra has really gone down, as you know, to about twenty percent. But these are momentary uh, you know, uh, interruptions, and I feel that uh, give or take a couple of months, we should be on a growth track. The government has uh, predicted that we require about four and a half trillion dollars worth of investment in infrastructure. That is, we have to do it, not just to make this country a better place to be in, but also to provide uh, employment to the you know, 12 million people entering the workforce. So I don't think that we need to worry too much about the mid to long term prospects here. You know, when we just talk about, uh, you know, changes that have happened, what is the, you know, a lot of changes government has done in terms of payment, the kind of payments they are doing, the kind of ordering activity. But once again, you know, state finances are also getting hurt. You know, how do you balance these two? You know, when you talk about such high CAPEX, such high construction activity, uh, do you think sufficient money is available for high growth in infra? Of course, that is a concern. As I said, you know, earlier, say about a couple of years back, uh, the ratio of public to private spending in infra was much better. Now it's I think it's about 80, 20, and private the private share has gone down for reasons we all know, and state governments I don't want to name them are facing some crunches. Uh, so in terms of diversion of expenditure towards immediate, uh, you know, survival needs around healthcare, etc. Yeah, that is a concern, and we are seeing uh, talking to our clients uh, a lot of uh, worries on the ground. But point I was trying to make is you know these are you know if you look uh, say beyond. Uh, FY, uh, say, you know, 21, 2021 and so on, I think uh, these will largely be uh, you know, sort of overtaken. The, the resilience of the economy, the, you know, the people's... I, 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 I think uh, infra play will uh, be back in form maybe by next year. And also you recall that the IMF predictions on the growth of the country are looking pretty good for the next financial year, given where we are now. So what about, uh, you know, the long-term vision for infrastructure 2025? How much has COVID dampened the prospects or the rate of growth that was seen? Um, and do you think that a lot of those targets now will have to be compromised? Yeah, I think there is going to be a, a momentary downturn. But as I said, till 2040, the economic survey of the country predicted, uh, predicted a requirement of about four and a half trillion uh, USD. Till 2040, and that's quite a lot. It's more, you know, about twice the country's GDP. But having said that, you know, uh, let's take this invisible infrastructure piece, for instance. 
Prime Minister announced in the Independence Day speech that every village in the country will have basic net connectivity by in about two years' time from now. And look at what that's going to do to the country when every you know every person in the field or in the farm or a lady sitting at a home has access to markets, has access to information. That whole arbitrage of information will reduce. I think those are the kind of things which will really uh, give a fillip to the country's prospects and economic growth. And even on things like, you know, like uh, transportation, etc., I think once the, uh, you know, a lot of it is, of course, the, uh, you know, so uh, pandemic dependent and how we find it anti road as early as possible. But, you know, I, as I said before, uh, we will have a tough year in terms of infrastructure creation this year, but I think uh, next year onwards we should be back on track. And there are so many things we can do to uh, make up for the this dip we've had this year. Okay, fair enough. Um, just wanted to also get in a sense as to, you know, what these projects, uh, the update is, because a large chunk of them had been halted on account of the lockdown, of course. So what strategies is it that you're recommending, particularly uh, going forward for, um, you know, these companies within different sectors of infrastructure? See, a lot of it, uh, you know, there's also a kind of uh, supply side constraint uh, in, in, in the sense that you know, labor supply is sort of suddenly diminished, etc. We are also hoping that will lead to a better, more sustainable uh, kind of uh, regulatory and policy uh, infrastructure ecosystem for you know, uh, getting workmen onto these projects. And many of them are done with uh, migrant labor, as you know. So uh, I think there needs to be a rethinking about uh, something which is more sustainable, uh, not just for the, uh, for the workers and for the infrastructure creators. So these are all uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, work in progress as we speak. And one more thing I want to touch upon, in the public-private partnership paradigm in this country, we need to really redesign it. There have been PPP successes, there have been failures. We need to relook at the complete uh, you know, contractual and legal arrangement around it, the risk sharing arrangement, the financing and funding part of it, the land uh, allocation part of it. Those four or five pieces need to come together. And finally, infrastructure play in this country, the 4.5 trillion USD goal that we have cannot be attained by taxpayer money alone. And uh, unless you fix these four or five pieces, it will have a very difficult journey getting there. And one of the things we are looking at uh, as a consulting firm is also to help the government uh, with some great thought pieces, uh, work out a playbook for PPP in this country, learning from experience, et cetera. So these are some of the points on which the, you know, the, the, the policy makers of this country really need to uh, focus on. just talk about infrastructure you know for last 12 15 or maybe you know after 2008 it really never picked up and one of the or two of the key issues was capital allocation so companies went very very aggressive taking debt and investing into infrastructure so that was one and second was of course the counterparty payments you know that either got delayed or some of the counterparties you know got bankrupt uh, over the years uh, do you think when this time around this is happening or this surge is happening in terms of the number of projects or how you're seeing in various sectors these are things which have changed companies balance sheet are now much lighter uh, they are not going whole aggressive they are waiting for their margins to come rather than you know just pounce on any project agree you know look at the infrastructure play it's 30 years play or 40 years play or 50 years play etc so what is the investor looking for they want policy stability in terms of assured revenues in terms of a no disturbance to the ecosystem in terms of a very fair allocation of risks in terms of no uncharted waters when you put your money in and uh, we've been learning from these experiences in the past you know the partial successes of the bot models or even the high models which the NHA has had. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work which needs to be done by all the stakeholders, including the government, to uh, assure people of uh, a very secure policy environment. But having said that, also, there are exogenous factors like the non-banking finance companies crisis. I don't want to get into the details there. That is one part which needs to be fixed. But the basic key here, and let me repeat it, is uh, giving the investor a very stable and very assured uh, policy uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, policy ecosystem, which means that you have a toll on a road, it must be ensured that the toll conditions are honored and so on and so forth. But having said that, one model which NHA has done very well is uh, this whole question of asset recycling. And that is a model where private investors can come into play. The NHA has been bundling these roads together. I think it's a good time for the states to pick it up and sort of hive out the aged assets to private players so that the money which comes in from there uh, can be used to finance fresh infrastructure, 
It also means the ownership will rest with the sovereign, which is the government. So there is no question of any selling the crown jewels. But that's a very good way to churn out money for the infrastructure requirements of this country. Let me flag that. In terms of, you know, the environment, Right, uh, right, sir. So really short on time, otherwise I would have liked to continue this discussion. Uh, but thanks so much. We'll wait and watch for the factors at play in infrastructure and how things unfold over there. On that note, we're taking a break. Coming back quickly, stay tuned. Market's flat, but the real story is that the broader market is actually doing better.